Hello everybody, I want to take a little bit of time to do a video review of the Cube Pro 3D printer and wanted to start with actual some of the prints and the actual output from the printer. I've been printing in both PLA and ABS plastic. I've had decent results in both, although I've had better results with the ABS than I have with the PLA. I've got a few specific things I've printed here. First off, I'll start with where I've had the best results in PLA, which is in this alignment tool. Uh, this particular alignment tool is designed to take a small laser and then has a clip that holds the laser in place. And this print came out just about perfect. Um, fits like a glove very tight. Um, the tolerances that the printer had versus my STL design file were pretty much so dead on. Um, there's no play, no wiggle. I didn't do any cleanup at all on this part and it just fits absolutely perfect. So very happy with this print. This however was not the first PLA print that I did. When I first started with the Cube Pro, I started with a keychain for family and I actually started in that particular one with this particular ABS print and with the ABS I was pretty happy. However, when I moved over to PLA I started running into a few problems. If you take a look at these two keychains, you'll notice in the ABS version the lettering is very clear and the fonts are fully connected. If you take a look at the PLA version, you'll notice in the PLA is in silver, the ABS is in red. If you look at the PLS versions, and I did try several STL variants, the fonts never connected. This seems to be a problem with the Cube Pro software, although I'm not sure the exact reason. I have reached out to Cube Support, hoping to hear a response back if they can explain why I'm having some of these print problems with higher resolution components in PLA. Okay, next I'll show you the cartridges, some of the Cube Pro software, and a little bit more of the printer hardware. Okay, so everything on the Cube Pro is touch screen. So, Squirt is the name of my printer. I'll go ahead, choose setup, change cartridge, and we can see 99% white ABS, 97% ABS, so select the cartridge to change. We're going to select red ABS and we'll just let this go through heating up the print jets. What we're going to do pull up on the cartridge and just slowly back it out of the tube. Pull okay, now that we've removed our other filament we need to just load this in. It's all set up to slide under the clamp so we slide the filament under the clamp find the feeder hose. Okay, so here you can see the wire coming in through the filament. And it's, it's a little trickier as it rounds the bend. This gives us a good view of the print surface. It's uh, kind of like a ceramic glass and the cube guys rely on some basically magic glue. It's a uh, water soluble little glue to help uh, stick it to the build plate. It is not a heated build plate, so you can get some warping on ABS parts as I found out uh, when I first started, although the whole build chamber is temperature controlled uh, somewhat and is a nice, clean, good door to hold it down, so the whole chamber gets pretty warm, but without the heated build plate, you do have to be careful on ABS warping still. Okay, so the first part we're going to play with is just a small little keychain uh, I made for family. And just starting out in Cubify design, uh, first thing you'll notice, I do have two colors selected. When I first started experimenting with Cube Pro, Pro Printer, uh, I was hoping I could set the color here in Cubify Design or Cubify Event and have it carry over to the printer. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Any colors that you set here in Cubify Design don't carry over to the printer. So, um, as you can see here, it's a fairly simplistic design. A uh, couple of beveled parts. Uh, some fonts that do have some font metrics in them, a couple of parts there, 
So you get a pretty good view of what we're dealing with for the actual part. And so what we have to do from here is in Cubify Design, we just go through and we choose to export. And we export as an STL. Um, and in this case, I can just go uh, export. I have a few other 3D parts here that I've exported. And then we're given a handful of options. So, you know, we're going to use the design units, which in this case um, is in millimeters. We're going to select the maximum angle um, and pick through. Uh, surface deviation, minimum cell size. So we've got a handful of options that we can set. Uh, once we have exported our model, which I'm actually going to cancel because I did export it earlier, and it does take a little while, uh, then we fire up our Cubify software, which is the Cube Pro software. This is required to generate, you know, the basically the G code that goes into the printer. Um, you see it's a little bit of a different interface. At this point, we open a model, and uh, I'm going to go to that 3D parts directory and the printable version. As you can see, yeah, I had a few other attempts that I did um, trying and playing with the STL options. Um, once this loads here, you'll see in the background we actually have a copy of the print tray and we see the part just lays right down onto it. Um, we can see right now it is upside down that's the way I want it so we're going to just rotate it. Uh, oop, we actually have to click it first. We click the model, going to rotate it 90, rotate it 90 degrees again so now it's standing upright. Now we'll get it flat with the text upright. We do uh, want that so we can see this is nice and clean here. So from here, we can select. Now, in this case, you'll notice I can't select that text. Even though it was a different color in Cubify Design, uh, it's fixed here. Uh, checked online a little, looks like they have to be separate, complete closed models in the STL. I have not figured out how to do that from Cubify Design other than just completely separate STL files, basically design them as a component and separately. So I'm not real happy with that right now. I'm hoping that's a problem that I have and there's a way around it, but at this point, um, I just really don't know. So currently, I just changed the printer from ABS Red to PLA Silver. So I'm going to go ahead and select PLA Silver, go back to home, make sure our color picker is there. Now once we've picked our color, we click the PLA button again to leave that mode. This looks pretty good. And then we click the build button. Once we click the build button, we've got a few options. Um, I'm gonna click this in premium, which will be the highest layer resolution. Print strength will be strong, should be fine for this. Print patterns, diamonds. Uh, no raft material is pretty important. Uh, support material none for design like this. And support type lines, reading online appears to be the best. Um, at least from the old Cubex printer. So the important part with not having a raft is if you're printing the same material, uh, the first couple I did print with a raft, it was really hard to remove the raft without damaging the model. Um, I have not tried mixing PLA and ABS where I use a, a raft out of PLA and the model in ABS. That might work a little better. Um, but once we've set this up, we select build. It's going to prompt us where we want to create the build file, which I'll put onto my little SD, uh, my little uh, USB key here, and alternatively, uh, we could connect the printer via Wi-Fi and print from there. But so I'm going to just call this Keychain PLA, so I know it is the right one, and then this will actually build out um, the model and tell us how long it's going to take to print. Last time I printed an ABS, it was about an hour and a half. We'll see how it uh, goes in PLA. Okay, with PLA build times, just a little bit shorter than it's reported with ABS. One hour, 14 minutes. So let's go ahead, go over there, and build our part. <laughs>
So you can see it's tracing out the initial shape. Completed in one hour, 41 minutes. Zoomed in quite far on the camera, you can see a little bit of these lines here on the side from the layer thickness. When you're actually holding the object, that's barely visible. It uh, actually appears to be less visible in the ABS plastic than with the PLA. Saying This looks like a bit of a print issue instead of an issue with the model itself where you can see a little bit of gap. It doesn't quite print it as a contiguous piece. If you look at the upper left corner of the ABS stacked on top of the PLA model, you can notice a little bit of warpage where it was contacting the build tray. This is where the heated build chamber helps, but having an actual heated build platform would help even more. The imperfections are very minor in this design. It prints very cleanly. This particular PLA print definitely did print with some issues, although overall I've been very happy with the majority of the prints that I've done and the accuracy looks very good.